there was this wave that came uh, behind me oh and God. just slammed me down into the water. We retired early to travel the world. And don't get us wrong, it's been great. Awesome. But you know, like any travel experience, it doesn't always go as planned. Today, we're gonna to share some of our most epic travel fails with you. And by fail, we mean things that didn't go exactly as we had intended. Uh, we think maybe you'll find some of them funny and hopefully learn something from our fails. So let's talk about our first travel fail. It happened not too long after we retired. If you remember from our very video series, one of the first places we went to was Caretro, Mexico, and then right after that, San Miguel de Allende. And if you know anything about San Miguel de Allende, it's this storybook town uh, from the past, Beautiful right? Place. Uh, gorgeous, colorful buildings. Every The town is on the side of a mountain. There's this amazing cathedral in the center of it. But, you know, it's a, from a different era. So it's not perfect. And the sidewalks in particular are not perfect. It's all bumpy with cobblestones. cobblestones. It's cobblestone streets and sidewalks, uneven curves, uh, just, just very historic, very beautiful, uh, but very different from what we have in DC. And it led to our first accident, you might say. You wanna tell that story? Yeah, when I was walking down those beautiful uh, cobblestone sidewalks and talking to Chris and pointing out uh, a coffee shop that a friend of ours had recommended, I tripped over these cobblestone streets and I broke my foot. It hurt so bad. So uh, they're beautiful and I thought I was very conscious of it because everybody talks about it. it's the city that's called the city of fallen women. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> it's famous for people falling. We were laughing about that, saying, we're not going to do that. And then I actually broke my foot there. So, And I think what's uh, unusual, but maybe not, is that the reason why women fall so much is because they have heels. Not, mm -hmm. They're not wearing sensible shoes, many of them. I was wearing but running shoes, yeah. But I'll tell you what, after that, I changed my shoes and I got more stable shoes. And uh, the lesson learned is no matter how nimble you think you are, watch out for historic towns with cobblestone streets and sidewalks and curbs because you're not as cool as you think you are when you break your foot. <laughs> so this next travel fail, you might say, uh, happened in San Miguel as well. So we had just retired and our house, uh, we sold our house. So our new house was under renovations while we were there in San Miguel. So we, we had an Airbnb while we were there, but we only had it for a month and we couldn't extend, so we had to find a second Airbnb. And that second Airbnb, the experience there didn't go as planned. Yeah, we were so excited when we got this place because it was the holidays and there was not a lot to pick from. So we found one right down the street. The price was reasonable, it looked good, it had great reviews. And uh, we signed up for several weeks for this thing. And it was actually great. The host was great, we got there, the space was great. Of course, the location was really close to where we were. But what we found was, unfortunately, every day, seven days a week, between 11 a.m. and 6, 7 p.m. at the earliest, there was a bar next door on the second floor, which is where we were, that was blasting music the entire time on this set list. I'm talking about disco music and Mexican music. Mexican, and, and since it was the holidays, oh my God. the Christmas songs, the same Christmas songs over and over again. For hours, and I'm talking about the speaker was as big as our apartment, and it was on the wall next to our bedroom. And so it was crazy, and there was no moving, and there was nothing to do about it. No, so what's the lesson here? I, I think it's probably the most important lesson we've the learned. The lesson we learned, and this one's the hardest one in my life, is you're just gonna have to learn to relax mm -hmm. and have a little patience. I, I, it literally was maddening, but I think we just decided, look, there's nothing I can do about this, or we can do about this, and we're not gonna change it. So. We tried to laugh about it, and we actually started picking out the songs we liked. We left during the day some, but uh, you know, what are you gonna do? So you're in another country, you gotta kinda roll with it. And I think the thing is roll with it, 
have some fun with it, and try to love each other through it because sometimes that just happens. So this next travel fail uh, happened in San Miguel as well. I guess a lot of things happened in yeah. San Miguel. Um, this could have been worse than it ended up being, Much. I suppose. But San Miguel was an amazing place. And we had just retired, so I think we got caught up in the romance oh, of this, this foreign city. And so we decided to go looking for a house. house. And listen, we found several. <laughs> And so we got a real estate agent. We had convinced ourselves this is such a great, cool thing. And, you know, we had heard about it for all these years and we were in love with it. So uh, you'll see we actually did a, a video on yeah, it. Yeah, it was a cool video. But listen, we, we put an offer on a house and we were ready to roll. And fortunately for us, in retrospect, the seller turned down our offer. Um, but we, given another <laughs> circumstance, would be homeowners in San Miguel yeah. right now. And I think that would have been okay. We would have been all right. No, I but yeah, I, don't I don't think in, uh, with the perspective we have now on traveling and all the places we've gone, uh, that would not have been good for us. So I think the lesson learned is. Don't buy a house. <laughs> don't buy a house. <laughs> no. Don't get carried away and buy a house. <laughs> right. You can always buy a house later. Uh, don't buy a house on your first trip of retirement and don't get too excited and do something crazy because we almost did. Okay, we've moved on to another city. Uh, this time we're in Merida, Mexico. We found this amazing home there. Gorgeous. We were there for a month. We were having a great time, but this was during the pandemic, right? Uh, but we were so proud of ourselves because we were taking such amazing precautions. Oh my God. Mask and washing our hands and just everything that you can imagine. Testing, mm -hmm. yeah, we were doing great. Coming to the end of the, the trip there though, what happens? We got COVID and um, in spite of all of that, we got COVID and it was toward the end of our trip when you couldn't get home unless you had a ne negative, negative test. test. So by the grace of God, we actually got a negative test after being well for probably a week or so, it, we kept testing positive. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a, a negative test before we got home and we got home safely and everything was good. But the lesson learned is, I, you can't control everything, can't control I everything. suppose. And you, you gotta give yourself permission that, you know, yeah. you're gonna try everything, but sometimes it's not gonna work out. Yeah. And be prepared for that. Cause I think we kind of kicked ourselves for a little we bit. We did. And you know, we were contingency planning because again, we're gonna lose our Airbnb and all that stuff. But you know, stuff happens. You can't control everything. You do your best and then you kind of roll with it. Fortunately, we got home and everything was good and we laugh about it now, but at the time it was stressful, man. And I needed some of that meditation, I think, that I use now because I was nervous. Yeah. Okay, so we're still in Merida and I mentioned how we had found the most amazing oh home. It was a colonial restoration of this historic home there. I mean, it had its own Beautiful. pool in the middle of the courtyard. Backyard. And hammocks in the backyard. And gorgeous, yeah, yeah, through the it, roof. Incredible, you've got to see the video of this house. It, and it was really it, was amazing. Was it the best house we've stayed oh, in so far? By far. Uh, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, however, <laughs> there was one setback to this house that we did not know until we got there. It was on a freaking speedway. Um, it, it was just called Calle, whatever it was <laughs> in Merida. Um, but let me tell you, there's some serious drivers there, especially the buses and stuff. Yeah. And the streets had been widened and the front door of this thing was literally about six inches from the speedway. And fortunately, the house kind of went back and the, the, the front room was a television, beautiful media room that we couldn't use no. because it was literally like being at the Daytona 500 inside the house. <laughs> and of course, every time we were coming out the front door, we were trying to slide around so we didn't get hit by the buses. So um, let me tell you, that was, that was crazy. That was crazy. So, I, but we learned a valuable lesson. So I think 
we had always really paid attention to our Airbnb reviews and listings. But I tell you, now we go through those things with a fine tooth comb. comb. Yes. And, you know, we look for noise. We look for street, you know, that kind of stuff. We even get on Google Maps and try to, you know, find the particular location. So, you know, the house was amazing and we loved it. But let me tell you, that street was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, fortunately we survived it. But, you know, in in the future, we're going to look for stuff like that for sure. We recommend you do too. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be immediately obvious. Obviously, they're not going to say anything about that in the description itself. And the reviews... They're not going to always say it like really clearly what's going on, but you're going to see you every now and again somebody out. says, oh, and there was a bit of street noise that we heard. Like, take that seriously yeah, and see out. if there are patterns and go with that. Our next one takes you to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, where we found and still love this place, uh, the most amazing a condominium complex with a perfect apartment and pools and security and private beach and all of these wonderful things that we love with a beautiful stretch of beach out there uh, that we went out on often. Uh, But one day we had a little something something happen. Uh, So I decided to go into the water. Not very far, mind you, but I'm not a great swimmer. And I thought I could do this, I asked Michael to stay close by, and it seemed fine, but you know, the conditions, I, I wasn't familiar with it. And those waves and that undertow, and there's like this ledge right off the beach, there was this wave that came uh, behind me oh and God. just slammed me down into the water. I lost my footing, I couldn't breathe, my, body was just slammed to the ground and contorted. So if you look at some videos around that time, you will see that I have like these abrasions on my face. It's from my face being like planted into the sand. Yes. Like I was scared. I, I, I could have been really, really, really hurt there. And I missed the whole thing because somehow I was taking pictures somewhere else. (laughs) I think it was on Facebook or uh, responding oh, no. to a comment on YouTube. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> but it really yeah. scared him. Like it really mm-hmm. hurt him. And he had abrasions <laughs> and really neck pain and other stuff for I a while did, afterwards. For quite a and while. he was basically coming out of the water. So let me tell you what, watch the flags. It was a yellow flag day, so it wasn't a red flag day, but those undertoes and those uh, that surf can really grab <laughs> you. So be careful out there. Absolutely. Eventually, we found ourselves in the city of love, the city of light, Paris. Incredible city, of course. Uh, Fortunately, it's a very walkable city. So we were going to all of the museums and the monuments and the Eiffel Tower. We were having an amazing time, and we were walking. And we were walking like many, many miles a day. 13 to 15 miles a day. And we were loving it. Until? Until my back went out. I, I don't know what happened. I pride myself on being in decent shape for a guy my age, but we had been walking so much and I guess I wasn't doing enough stretching and stuff that my back goes out. And um, let me tell you, I couldn't, I couldn't move. Like I'd never had anything like this before. So fortunately we have insurance and I got a televisit. So uh, we got a televisit and they kind of checked me out and then they referred me to a local doctor. I didn't have to go because it kind of, Took about a week, which is what they said to recover, and they gave me exercises and stuff. But let me tell you, I was immobile, and I was scared because we're in the middle of Paris, and I literally was in so much pain, I thought I was gonna die. I think the lesson here is- Get insurance. Get insurance. No matter how young you are, how healthy you are, don't mess with this. Yeah, get 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 insurance. insurance. And stretch. If you're gonna walk a lot, no matter how young or in shape you are, stretch. Get your yoga stretches and, and get those things stretched out, especially if you walk that much that often. You heard it here first. In the next travel fail, we ended up in Egypt. Bucket mm. list travel destination. We've been looking forward to going there forever. 
And we stayed at a couple of hotels there. The first hotel that we stayed at, stayed at, um, it looked like a beautiful hotel. It was gorgeous. They led us up to our non-smoking room, but my God, it reeked of cigarettes. It was like living in an ashtray. I mean, it, it, active smoking on this non-smoking floor. I've never seen anything like it. So we went and talked to the administration and they brought us up to another room. It was a little bit better, but really. On a non-smoking floor, we are literally, the, our room was better. It wasn't as terrible. We could actually breathe. But two doors down, it was like you could see smoke coming under the, under the, under the door when they opened the door. And so we quickly discovered. So I guess the lesson is twofold. Yeah. One is, you know, ask. Don't ask. be afraid to ask. Yeah. I'm the most guilty of that. I don't ask. like to make waves and, yeah. and ask for, get us another room, take this, send this dish back. But you got to get comfortable with that. Now, it still didn't work out much better. So I think the other lesson that we learned is that... Sometimes non-smoking floors get smoked on and they know it. Like in this culture, they clearly knew about it. They weren't enforcing it. It wasn't anything that was something that was really a big deal to them. So yeah, I, think I think there's cultural, cultural differences. differences. People were smoking everywhere in Egypt, even on non-smoking floors. And there was nothing that we were gonna do that was gonna change that. So we kind of had to suck it up. We didn't like it too much, but you know, ask, try to get some help and then, you know, kind of suck it up when you need to. Okay, so we're still in Egypt. We're having a great time. And in this particular uh, trip that we took, we didn't go on our own. It, it would have been too overwhelming. Yeah. So we went with an organized group tour with Viking. They took great care of us. Uh, they chartered this bus. And there was this small group of us on this bus. Um, what we noticed early on was that a few people came on who were part of the group who were kind of coughing mm -hmm. and seemed like they weren't like that something was going on. Maybe they weren't in the best health and they were nurse, nursing a, a cough or a cold or something like that. Yeah. And then? And then we got sick. Um, and so did almost everybody else everybody. on the bus. It I'm tore through about, that bus. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And uh, you know, we're in the people literally a bus seat behind us, um, sneezing and coughing and doing all this stuff. And too late, of course, we used our mask, but we knew and we should have used our mask. Mm -hmm. So I think the lesson is, is it's not just about COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be in close quarters like that, but especially on a bus, don't be afraid to use your masks. And you know, if you see stuff like that, everybody on our bus got sick and uh, it wasn't COVID, it was just a cold or something, but it was kind of nasty and we knew better, uh, but we didn't use our mask. And, yeah. you know, it we could were, have, you like, have lowered the possibility or at least yeah, delayed it's not gonna, it. That, it's not perfect. That's perfect, but it um, could have definitely helped and helped with the probability mm -hmm. of, getting us, of us getting sick as well. So don't be scared to use your mask. We should have used ours. So we're just talking about being in Egypt and being with this group tour. Um, we got to know a lot of the people on that bus. Yeah. They were wonderful. They're, many of them are going to be friends of ours Still for amazing. a very long time, right? But we have to tell you, we were with these folks, I don't know, for, I mean, like for weeks. weeks and weeks and weeks. weeks. Yeah, weeks and weeks. And you're on, of course, you're getting going to the airport together, you're on the bus together, which means you're eating together, you're going to the hotels together, then you're on the boat together, then you're on tour together, then you're together together. So mm -hmm. we were together. And, um, you know, it was a lot. So um, while we enjoyed it, we found that in an environment like that, we kind of got people overload a little bit. And, and I think that's okay. I mean, yeah. we, we love these people, but you know, you gotta need, you need your space every you now and then, right? You need your space, yeah. And so, you know, be careful of that. You know, we, we couldn't on this particular experience 
find really any time until about th two weeks into the tour when we actually got on the boat and had a little bit of space. But be aware, you know, when you take tours like that and trips like this, uh, some of the best things that happen, uh, happen with others. And uh, then there are others that there's a lot of others. There's, a, there's just a whole lot to it and uh, can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. So I think a, a lesson is to balance it out. If you're going to have this lifestyle and you're going to travel, you may get gravitate to a lot of group tours, but be aware that, that if it goes too long, it could be a lot for you. So balance that out with maybe some uh, trips with just your loved one. Yeah, yeah. We were touring the Middle East and going to many different countries, not just Egypt, but we also went to Jordan and then Israel as well. And Israel had been on our bucket list. Uh, for me personally, I was raised as a Catholic, so I had heard so many stories about some of the locations uh, in Israel and Jerusalem and such. Uh, we got to walk the Via del Rosa, the Stations of the Cross. We got to see the uh, Last Supper Room. Um, you know, all of these amazing locations amazing that we've and heard about. And wonderful people. Absolutely. However, something incredibly serious happened while we were there. Yeah, it was really sad. You have a little trepidation about going to the Middle East um, with all the history and things that are still going on there. And while we were there, a terrorist attack happened uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, where we were. And uh, it wasn't that far from where we were. So that was very sobering, very um, just nerve wracking and, and, and very humbling for us. Um, so, you know, we had had a great trip, everything was fine, we weren't hurt, uh, people were hurt in that uh, bombing, but it was certainly something that made us step back and think. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the lesson that we learned here was that, you know, the world is complicated, and then some serious things are happening out there, some, some dangerous things. And take very serious precautions, be yeah. aware, do your research, but the main thing to know is just, don't let it scare you from travel. Get out there, see the world, embrace it, be careful, but travel. Yeah. Hear the rest of the story by checking out our video on our best travel experiences. See you there.